Mineral Rights, Wikipedia Article Audio Mineral rights are property rights to exploit an area for the minerals it harbors. Mineral rights can be separate from property ownership. Mineral Estate Severability Major Elements Mineral Rights Leasing Ownership Leasing The Division Order Oil and Gas Lease Royalty Check Owning mineral rights gives the owner the right to exploit, mine, and slash or produce any or all minerals they own. Minerals can refer to oil, gas, coal, metal ores, stones, sands, or salts. An owner of mineral rights may sell, lease, or donate those minerals to any person or company as they see fit. Mineral interests can be owned by private landowners, private companies, or federal, state or local governments. Mineral estates can be severed, or separated, from surface estates. There are two main avenues to mineral rights severance, the surface property may be sold and the minerals retained, or the minerals may be sold and the surface property retained, though the former is more common. When mineral rights have been severed from the surface rights, it is referred to as a split estate. In a split estate, the owner of the mineral rights has the right to develop those minerals, regardless of who owns the surface rights because in United States law, mineral rights trump surface rights. This can create tension between mineral rights owners and surface rights owners if the surface rights owners do not want to allow the mineral rights owners to use their property to access their minerals. Often, Companies will offer a surface rights owner a surface use agreement, which can provide financial compensation to the surface owner, or more commonly, offer some concessions on how the minerals are accessed. For example, some surface use agreements require the company to access the property from specific roads or points on the property. The five elements of a mineral right are the owner of a mineral interest may separately convey any or all of the above listed interests. Minerals may be possessed as a life estate, which does not permit a person to sell them, but merely that they own the minerals so long as they live. After this, the rights revert to a pre-designated entity, such as a specific organization or person. It is possible for mineral right owners to sever and sell oil and gas royalties, while keeping the other mineral rights. In such case, if the oil lease expires, the royalty owner has nothing and the mineral owner still owns the minerals. An owner of mineral rights may choose to lease those mineral rights to a company for development at any point. Signing a lease signals that both parties agree to the terms laid out in the lease. Lease terms typically include a price to be paid to the mineral rights owner for the minerals to be extracted, and a set of circumstances under which those minerals are to be extracted. For instance, a mineral rights owner might request that the company minimize any noise and light pollution when extracting the minerals. Leases are usually term limited, meaning the company has a limited amount of time to develop the resources, if they do not begin development within that time frame they forfeit their right to extract those minerals. The four components of mineral rights leasing are There are three distinct but related aspects of ownership. They are To bring oil and gas reserves to market Minerals are conveyed for a specified time to oil companies through a legally binding contract known as a lease. This arrangement between individual mineral owners and oil companies began prior to 1900 and still thrives today. Before exploration can begin, 
the mineral owner and the oil company must agree to certain terms regarding the rights, privileges and obligations of the respective parties during the exploration and possible production stages. Although there are numerous other important details, the basic structure of the lease is straightforward, in exchange for an upfront lease bonus payment, plus a royalty percentage of the value of any production, the mineral owner grants the oil company the right to drill for a period of time, known as the primary term. If the term of the oil or gas lease extends beyond the primary term, and a well was not drilled, then the lessee is required to pay the lessor a delay rental. This delay rental could be $1 or more per acre. In some cases, no drilling occurs and the lease simply expires. The duration of the lease may be extended when drilling or production starts. This enters into the period of time known as the secondary term, which applies for as long as oil and gas is produced in paying quantities. A division order is not a contract. It is a stipulation for agreement as to what the operator of a well or an oil and slash or gas purchaser will disperse in terms of revenue to the mineral owner. The purpose of the division order is to show how the mineral revenues are divided up between the oil company the owners of the mineral rights and the overriding royalty interest owners. The division order needs a signature, a current address and social security number for individual royalty owners or tax identification number for companies. An oil and gas lease is a contract because it contains consideration, consent, legal tangible items and competency. Many other line items can be negotiated by the time the contract is complete. When all parties come to an agreement the division order states how much revenue goes to each party involved. Mineral owners may receive a monthly royalty check if oil, gas, or any other substances of value are extracted from below the surface and either sold or used by an oil and gas operating company. The royalty paid is a function of the net value of the proceeds from the sale of the oil, gas, or other substance, multiplied by the owner's revenue interest decimal less any amounts deducted for taxes or other deductions. The revenue decimal used to calculate the amount of an owner's royalty check is calculated with the following equation. Revenue interest decimal, equals, A slash, U, R, P, Y, D. It is common for royalty checks to fluctuate between pay periods due to monthly changes in oil or gas prices, or changes in the volumes produced by the associated oil or gas wells. Additionally, royalties may cease altogether if the associated wells quit producing marketable quantities of oil or gas, if the operating company has changed hands and the new operator has not yet established a new payment account for the owner, or if the operating company or product purchaser is missing appropriate paperwork or proper documentation of changes in ownership or contact information. Legal Description, Net Mineral Acres, Ownership Type The Term of the Lease Usually there is a primary term and a secondary term. Each term has conditions set up either by the lessor or lessee to fulfill, the royalty rate. This is how the rates are divided and how it is calculated from the revenues produced from the mineral rights, if the lessor receives a bonus, if there is a delay rental agreement any delay in production by the lessee for a negotiated period the lessee can pay the lessor a negotiated amount of money per year to keep the contract active, if there is a shut-in royalty agreement royalties are paid at a negotiated rate per acre, only while the well is not producing oil or gas. A equals net mineral acres owned, U equals number of mineral acres in the oil and gas drilling unit or pool, 
R equals the royalty assigned to the mineral right owner by the oil and gas lease covering his or her minerals P equals participation factor assigned to the tracks owned by the mineral owner as described in a unit agreement, Y equals additional ownership factor assigned to the owner's mineral rights by any other arrangement or agreement D equals deductions.